it should be the heart of Oasis. All we need to do is light it with the Fire Seed, and it'll restore a pep with elemental power. The damage it suffered internally will also slowly begin to heal. Then let's hurry and light it! We still need to find the Traveler! Alright, hang on. Stable than I expected. But why? We barely used it. I'm not sure. Perhaps the fire seed was only capable of protecting one person. But if I didn't use its power on everyone, there's no way of knowing where you could have been sucked into. And even if that's the case, there's no reason for it to simply shatter, uh, unless. Unless what? Unless I was already in a weakened state when I created this fire seed. Which would be when we at first saved the desert. Oh no. Wait, let's put that aside for a moment. If the fire seed has shattered, wouldn't that mean we came all this way for nothing? Oh, do you know what we should do now, Nahida? Oh, come on, Paimon, think! I... Uh, <sighs> Don't worry, Paimon. This is my responsibility. The Fire Seed is technically just a ball of highly concentrated elemental power. Although my elemental power is slightly different than that of elemental life forms, I gained a better understanding of it when I turned into a fungus. So, all I have to do is imitate that power, while adding some of my own. And I'll be able to do what the Fire Seed was supposed to. You're gonna become the Fire Seed? Yes. It'll take a lot of power from me, but it still won't be anything compared to when I was in the desert. I might, however, become even smaller. What happens if you keep getting smaller? I'll become a blade of grass or a twig. Basically, I'll return to how I was first born. I will be able to unleash power beyond my limits if I can reverse the process of growth. But... you'll lose everything. You'll not only lose your appearance, but... you'll lose your emotions, memories, and... who knows what else! That's alright. None of that matters compared to the dangers that a pep is facing right now. No, no, wait! There has to be another way. Besides, what will Sumeru do if you turn into a twig? Maybe you and the Traveler can plant me in the soil of Sumeru once it is all over. I can still communicate with the world through the forest. It's just that you won't be able to see me for some time. You can't be serious. If the Traveler were here, she definitely wouldn't let you go through with it. If we knew this was how you were going to take responsibility, then we never would have agreed in the first place! I'm sorry, Paimon, but we're out of options. Not all eagles who have fallen to the ground can soar in the sky once again. But if no risks are taken, then the eagle will be grounded forever. No. Please, no, Nahida! Uh, uh, uh. The fire seed shattered, and the heat is... she's... I know. A sacrifice must be made. Huh? But not by the Lord of Dendro. <sighs> We've all grown on this long journey. If the purpose of that growth was to return home, then our wishes have come true. Would you lend us your power? You knew it would come to this. All the knowledge, language, and emotions that you have learned will be reverted into pure elemental energy. In your new homeland, nothing of who you were will remain. You won't be remembered by anyone. Is that truly... 
the return you've always dreamed of. Lord of Dendro, don't be sad. This is not your home. We go home. Lord of Dendro should also go home. Heartfelt desires! Awaken! Hey! Can you hear Paimon? Say something! You fungi said that your form didn't matter, right? Their knowledge, memories, and emotions have been reverted to elemental power and released. They are no longer able to respond to you. The Guardians that have accompanied me for countless eras have also transformed into my elemental power, just as they did. They will be born once again now that they're one. There's nothing to be sad about. But that's different! They won't ever be the same. Paimon, we will never understand it, and it will never understand us. That's how it's destined to be. But as long as you can be healthy again, then nothing else matters to me, Apep. Samara will be free from threat as long as your health is maintained. I thought that my rage would be kindled once my power returned to me. However, what I feel now is a feeling that has long eluded me. The feeling of peace. The forbidden knowledge influenced you ever since you were contaminated, greatly amplifying your hatred and rage. Yes. There's no denying that. Although my hatred for that usurper from beyond the heavens still stirs deep within me, destroying you and your people serves me no purpose. Be that as it may, my position still stands. And I will have nothing to do with you. When you inevitably perish due to your ever-expanding curiosity, I will still sneer and mock you in my heart. Heesh! Who can put up with you? I respect your decision, and with time, I will prove to you that we will not repeat our mistakes. Before you begin resting, there is one last thing I would like to know. How did you become affected by forbidden knowledge? It's a long story. We all once believed in the distant past that only forbidden knowledge could give us enough power to defeat the heavenly principles. The Dragon King acquired the power of darkness from outside of this world and led us in a fight against the order established by the outsiders. Dragon King? An unimaginable war took place into that, causing destruction on an unprecedented scale. The world itself was on the verge of collapse. In war, the victor would inherit the right to shape the world, while the losers must turn into ash. But I didn't give up on searching for a way to turn the tides even after the death of the Dragon King. As I attempted to collect more forbidden knowledge from the corners of the world, as it was on the verge of collapse, I was stopped by the giant spike that fell from the sky. Sand dunes arose where there was only forest, and it was as if even Sumeru itself was trying to tell me that the era of the dragons was over. But you still didn't give up, did you? Because of Amun Alachmar. Yes. Alachmar eventually obtained this power with the help of Nabu Malikata. His ambitions continued to grow, and he planned to establish a powerful kingdom in my domain. Although I didn't think much of him, I allowed his actions 
under one condition. The condition was that after his death, all the knowledge he came to accumulate would belong to me. At that time, I still harbored deep regrets. By the time the Dragon King finally returned, the world had irrevocably changed. Some of the dragons have grown close to your kind, and have forgotten all about our hatred from when the world was taken from us. And some died, leaving behind nothing but their bones, while others chose to flee after experiencing pain and agony. But for me, the scales and will of the Dragon King still shine bright in my heart, even to this day. I will follow it until the end of my time. You really are insane. When Alakmar's proud kingdom collapsed, I swallowed him whole as I agreed and absorbed his elemental power. However, what I gained was no benefit. No. I gained the Apocalypse. I used up all my strength just trying to keep the pain under control. I had no energy to analyze the knowledge he had accumulated. But even then, I still believe that his insanity was far greater than that of my own. So that's how the Apocalypse started. I admit that I fell for his trap. I was like a final failsafe in his plan. Tiny Boor, and the rest of you, continue forward. I shall keep a watchful eye. How far will a life so dear and precious to the Heavenly Principles be able to go? I wonder. Hey! Looks like we've been sent back out! Still in one piece, too! The dragon will need to rest for a very long time before it is fully healthy again. It's not as ruthless as it was before. Curing the dragon of its illness has seemingly made it more open to reason. Nobody's in a good mood when they're feeling sick. Even though we accomplished something really important, Paimon still doesn't feel happy for some reason. Indeed. Although they'll still have the chance to be born again, they've lost their memories of their journey and their feelings for their homeland. Each opportunity for growth is unique in its own way. Perhaps the immense power we released was the pouring out of all these irreplaceable emotions that had built up over time. Can you really call a place with no family your home? Family... Right! The Hydrofungus left behind its family! Those two fungi might be waiting for it to return. Oh yeah! Let's hurry and go take a look! Huh. How are we going to explain all the complicated things that happened? They're still here! Have they really been waiting here all this time? <laughs> We're back. <sighs> I'm sorry. I really am. But it's gone home and won't be able to return for a very long time. <laughs> Don't be sad. It did it to protect you. Your happiness is more important to it than anything else in the world. It said that Newer is its most important family member. That's your name, isn't it? This is wonderful! So it has left traces of itself after all. They will definitely meet again, someday. <laughs>